Thank you everyone for coming here today. It's actually amazing that everybody has come from all over the country to actually spend their money and get to the Gold Coast to come here and learn something. And it's, uh, this is my gift that I'm going to give to you guys. Is It's not about me to show you how wonderful I am or each of this country. No. <laughs> but it's, it's more about me. This is about you guys rather than myself to show you what I can do is just what it's more about showing what you're able to do if you wish to embrace it. So as you know this everybody this is Sock Monster. Woo! Big for Sock Monster. Woo! Make you feel special. Now Sock Monster I've only actually had for six weeks and I've actually done the training purely for this event with this horse. So He's came into my hands, and this is what I've done uh, purely for this show. So he's still in training, like Tequila was. Does anyone know Mr. Tequila? Yeah. Where's Tequila? <laughs> so this is what it is. And so he's still in the middle of his training. Well, they're always in training, but he's still very early on. So as you know, we're going to get from the halter here that I have on now to the bridle which will be the in-hand work, to eventually the long range, which will go through the roller there, or the bidding rig, whatever you want to call it, or so single. So what I would always do, I'd never long rein a horse until I've done the process that I'm about to show you. So as you've heard Ian talk about, forward, backwards, left and right, it's very, very important. So they must be soft up here. So a lot of the time you can start backing a horse up and they'll kind of poke their nose and get their neck long because they're trying to gain space. So you want to actually make sure when the feet are going backwards, for instance, he must get soft up there and have his neck low and submissive. Because if you get them going backwards and they don't give their nose and get soft and low, you're actually teaching the horse to escape backwards. You go, yeah, he goes backwards, but there's not a lot of control because they're escaping. So if a horse has got like this and he's running backwards at a thousand miles an hour, I will stay with him and I'll ask him to go backwards even harder. So if he's, if he's trying to escape, running back, I'll stick with him and I'll be up close here where my hand is. Now my hand is very close to his chin and I do that a lot with this. And if he's, if it's still a very soft following hand, but if I want to ask a bit more, he must come to the nose pressure. Now, if he's not good with the nose pressure, he's not going to be good with the bridle. So, now, if I'm backing a horse up, and you have to be very careful if you're going to do this at home, and he's really sticky, you see, he's actually a little bit sticky now, he's doing good, but he's a little bit sticky. I'll bring my whip under his belly, and I'll start tapping him with rhythm. You can see now I can start marching him back, right? We can slow down and say, I'm gonna tap you. I'm showing my intention towards the horse. Tap, 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 gets his hind legs active and starts moving back. And once I've kind of got that going on, that's, I'm pretty, pretty cool with that, but I've actually taken a step too far there. I now would always start off I like to make sure they back up, but they must work long. But every time I work a horse to lunge, I will never, you'll never see me come in right and go, all right, big fella, let's go. No. Every time you ever lunge a horse, if you wish to embrace this, shoulders must come clean first, like that. Then go under the circle, right? And I've got my hand out here, and all of this is, everything is about catch up to my hand. So I'm going to say, catch up to my hand. Covers more country. Slow down a little bit. I'm coming back here and I've got to make sure that I can get long and short within an instant. So I'm going to make him bend. Make him bend, nice and soft. Keep his legs active. Good, nice bend. Let him out, there's a reward. Catch up to my hand. Catch up to my hand. Good, now if I just stop here and walk to his hind hand, he should just yield and come back to me. <laughs> So as you know, the dressage game, good riding is good riding, good training is good training in any respect. But the dressage game does bring a lot of new dynamics because we're not just cantering left and right with a pretty head carriage. It's all about having a light connection with the horse in front 
and being able to control the impulsion. A little impulsion, big impulsion. So if you don't have that adjustability, really you're just trotting around with the head in a nice frame. And, and if that's all you chase, is trying to put the head in a pretty position, that's all you'll ever do for the horse's rest of its life. So same deal, shoulders. And you'll see me, I move a lot. I very rarely will step backwards, very rarely. The only time I'll really step backwards if there's a, a very nervous horse and he just, and that'll give you confidence. Like as you saw Dan chase, getting the pony to chase the ball. Once that horse knows that you're gonna give it space. Once that horse knows you'll give it space, so if that horse that doesn't wanna lead up or something like that, I'll just step backwards. And if he doesn't come forward to the head pressure, I'll just run back, come on. Good boy. You see that little hard spot that he's got? That's what I'm trying to get rid of, so his just legs get active. Right, so I'm gonna say, come on, I'm gonna go, I'm going, 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 good boy. Well, I'll make my lifetime earnings running, running backwards. <laughs> really in that bombing, that wasn't it? <laughs> well, so he must be very sharp with his feet. Right, so once I've kind of got that going on with the head store, I make sure he yields his hind end, as, as you'll see all the other guys will do. It's very important. But I try not to do too much of it, because you don't want to get him washing out behind. So I'll do a lot more on the shoulders. And with the dressage people, be called a turn on the haunches. So he must be very good at that. So, you see my hand is very close. It's a light connection. I'm staying connected to the horse. And I want him to be good. See, I'll sometimes poke him in the neck. Move over there. But I'm trying to get to here, where my leg would be. Right, so I'm teaching this horse. Whether I was breaking him in, or fixing problem horse, everything is exactly the same. There's no difference whether it's a quiet horse, dull horse, horse that wants to buck, horse that wants to run away. I'm going to do exactly the same thing, no matter what, what horse I've got in my hands. And this is good, I like the sneezing. And it's like a release of tension, really. Ooh, I'm puffing a bit. So, good boy. So I do all of this warm up process. You see his hind legs are active. Really important. Activity in the legs is gonna make a horse feel more at peace because the energy has somewhere to go. So if I just wanted to get him a little bit more active, just take the boy. Good boy, that's perfect, good. And a lot of the time, now if I'm gonna start teaching him the short steps, he doesn't really know Piaf really well yet. He's still learning. But if I'm just wanting to teach him to get there active, good boy. <laughs> Through there, he's starting to learn, then I bring the whip in. Good boy. And I do this by loading up the hind end, by doing turns on the haunches. I don't like getting them against the wall like they do a lot, very classically. I try to avoid that at all costs. I like to, if he, a lot of the time when you start touching the horse up here, he wants to yield his hind end to the right. Right, so what I do is I just keep, every time he wants to go to the right with his hind end, so I'll just try and set him up to fail for a bit. So I start asking him to do a turn on the haunches. And he wants to keep yielding his hind end to the right, I just keep putting the shoulders back in front of him. Keep putting them back in front every time. So we can start getting this done like this in a circle. Good boy. So the horse still, like any Liberty horse or anything breaking, they should always just be paying attention. And if you're not paying attention, I'm gonna get onto you, I'm gonna pull your head and I'm gonna make it back up. Good boy. Right, then I ask him, say, here I'm going again, I come in lightly, but I really appreciate you're going to back up, you're a bit sticky, good, get, 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 get back, get back, get back. And horses, they'll kick, they'll double barrel, they'll do everything. So once I've kind of got that going on, same typical basic horsemanship with the mm -hmm. He's a little French. Good boy. And you can see this horse is actually a little weak in this right hind leg, so I've got to be mindful of that, that I don't push him too hard that it's going to hurt. So it's very important that you recognize where your weakness is with the horses. He's nice and fresh. Good boy. So, very important, basic horsemanship. Backwards. That way with the shoulders. I don't know this mic still is. Make sure it's plugged in. Good boy. Same deal, backwards with it. Backwards, shoulders right. Shoulders left, follow my hand, catch up to my hand. You have your horses nice and soft. Yeah. Then once I've kind of got that done with the holder, then I'll transition to the bridle. 
And this is quite a, uh, an electric environment for this big boy. Or, so if he's not going to stop, I'm going to get the shoulders that way, this way, whoa. Then I let him soak that up. You can see he's licking and chewing as the other boys are saying. Then I come in very slowly because I don't want him to react. I want him in peace. Boy. Let your coffee. But still, I'm always testing it. Are you with me? Just because we're walking off in a different direction from where we're working, you find that horses will do that a lot. Once you get in the different direction from where you work, you might be working here and you say, he's good there, then you walk off and he goes, cool, I'm done. And he starts walking off. So I go, you with me? You with me? But I don't try to trick him. You just, you're walking down the street, no big deal, and he's just there because you exist. So I walk in here, you should give me space. Right, well, if I come backwards, come backwards, come backwards. Good boy. Then everything should be nice and light. Good boy, you with me? You with me? Are you with me? Good boy. Well, he's not really with me. You see, I, I just, it's, it's not like I'm, you don't want to come in and trick him. No, he doesn't care anyway, but the, <laughs> some horses be touchy and you, you, they'll feel like you're trying to trick them. It's not what you're trying to do. You're not trying to see how, how fast can I move and he keeps up. Just move naturally. It's really, really important. Don't get sort of rigid like a robot. Sometimes you get the, you're giving people a lesson and they start, you know, they go like this. Quite interesting. So now make the horse go around and, and they're sort of, they're, they're like this, you know, they're butt sticking out like this or whatever, you know. Just move, just move like you do every day. And if you walk like a robot, well that's just how it is. <laughs> so it's very, very good that he, sh he should be active in the shoulders, he should be always listening. Not curling around me all the time because they fall on their forehand and they just, they're just not, they're not with you. Must be upright, like a dancer. Right. So, getting ready to do the long reins. I've gone from the halter now. Now I'm going to the bridle. And I'll, you'll see me. I'll pull them forward. Catch up to my head. So there, I'm catching up to my head. Stephen's coming back here. I'm pulling it up on an angle as if, he's in the, if I'm in the saddle. Catch up to my head. Catch up to my head. Catch up to my head. Like that. And every time he's nice and soft, and you just let him out. And the biggest problem too when you've got to say a horse like this has been in the dressage game. Not so, I love dressage and I'm with it. But there's, there's a lot of things going wrong because it's all about trying to keep the head pretty and it's not what it's about. The head carriage is a side effect of what the body's doing. It should be nice and light. You see, everyone, you see that weighs nothing, right? The way it should be. And if it doesn't weigh nothing, I'm going to grab his head and I'm going to say, hey, you can bend, you can move, 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 move. And when that hind head gets active, Active, he's leaning on me, he's leaning on me, active, active, there it comes life, let it out. Pick it up again, active, 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 more, more, high, step the hind leg through. He's leaning on me, he's leaning on me, I'm going to come in, I'm going to put more pressure, more pressure. And if you can't get it done in the job, there, good boy, move again. There, good. So you do the same each side. Then he's going to struggle more this way, so I have to be mindful of that. Don't be too demanding, because you can see the weakness, right? Yeah. Good boy. Just let him on out. Because the first few times, or well, the first couple of weeks, I'd let him out, and he just turned his head the other way and go, cool, I'm done. When are we finishing? When are we going back to the stables? And that's the mindset you need to get him out of. And that's a lot of the time. You're working your horse. You might have a lesson with someone, and you've done 45 minutes collected work, and you let the horse's head go, and you wonder why he's so out of balance and just flounders back to the barn. And most of the time you see the only time they get a loose rein is when it's finished and they go, oh, thank God that's done, we go, going back to the barn. And then you say, oh, every time I go to pick him up again, he gets, he gets grumpy. Because he thinks he's done. You've created the mindset that he's done. So the more you give the reins, the only way a horse is going to get like is if you give the reins. It's not about taking him. I had a lot of trouble with this horse locking his jaw. If I went like this, he'd start rooting his head like this and say, don't confine me. And he has to be confined. So if I was breaking one in, unless I can poke him in the belly like this, I'll do it for this side too. If, he's, if I'm going to poke him like that, 
I don't want him offended and jump sideways and kick me in the kneecap or buck or whatever. Because that's, where's your leg? It's here, right? So check that out. Even with a seasoned horse, I'll come in and say, how good are you? He might be, but you can hear this horse groaning a little bit. Because he's like, oh, don't poke me. Because he's only still new, right? This side here, he's a little weaker there, but I'm going to ask, ask, ask a boy. You see, the tail tells a story. A poke, the tail tells a story. Right, there we go. I'm coming in here. I, but at the same time, I don't want him running away and avoiding my hands. I want to still be able to touch him. And he's good with it. But if I asked more energy, it's my tension towards him. Good boy. It's the same deal. He's a big, clumsy horse. When I first started him, that's why I have him booted up so much, because he's clumsy as hell. He stands all over himself. Back to the turn on the forehand. Good. When you go from a turn to the forehand, active legs. Good one. That's nice, active. Right. Good. And you want to be able to run with him. And just because you're running, it doesn't mean that he's going to go, oh, cool, we're going to take advantage of you and jump all over you. Right? He's leaning on his forehead. Sit up, sit up, sit up. Good boy. Sit up, sit up, sit up. Good boy. Right, if I just stop like this, yield your hind end back this way. Right, it should be the same. No big deal, just because I changed direction. I'm going to stay away from the edge because you jump on top of me. Good boy. And be more mindful of that. If I get close to the edge and I'm on this side and he kicks sand on that, he'll run straight up the top of me because he's worried about this. So be mindful of those things. Right? Make sure he moves. Bend your neck. Bend. Good boy. Get a little lateral. Good. So once you kind of start to get a little bit of control, whoa, 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 whoa. so you're feeling a bit like that, you can stop. You just need to be able to walk and see what. If I feel him like trying to anticipate, we'll just stop. Ah, whoa. Go down each side. Whoa. And you can be very demanding with your horse if you've got good timing and very clear direction. The less. The less direction you're able to get, the less demanding you're able to be. If your timing's really good, and you're up for the challenge, and you've got a bit of grit to do it, you can pretty much do what you like as long as the horse is understanding and is at peace.